we try to observe what's going on on the outside to get to what is going on on the inside. People often overestimate the skill at reading other people's mind. It's quite difficult actually to get to another person's inner states. The leakage hypothesis has been around for a long time. And the idea is that liars will leak different cues, so to speak, than truth tellers. The idea with microexpressions falls under the leakage hypothesis. Microexpressions are expressions that are shown for fractions of a second in the facial uh, muscles. That has scientific support. But the problem with this is that liars and truth tellers, they both show microexpressions. And there's no microexpressions that only liars show and no truth teller. So this is a problem with the idea of using microexpressions to detect deceit. When you use these nonverbal cues, you perform just a bit better than chance level, 54%, and chance level is 50%. We also know from research that this also holds for police officers. They, are, they don't perform better. The only difference between police officers and others that have been studied is that police officers are more confident that they are accurate. So this is a, a dangerous combination, having poor accuracy but high confidence. One source of being highly confident is that you think that you have used reliable cues. You think that, well, I have used the cues I've been taught and, and uh, therefore I, I'm absolutely certain that this person is lying or telling the truth. People tend to use nonverbal cues, gaze or fidgeting and so on. But what research shows is that there are no associations between fidgeting, eye contact, nervousness and deception. Within the scientific community, there's no debate about this. The re-technique is very problematic, and especially when it comes to the guidance that the technique gives for detecting deceit. One argument that comes up is that others might go wrong, but I know which specific nonverbal cues that work. But the problem with that argument is that there are no reliable nonverbal cues. The second argument is that, well, I don't look at one nonverbal cue, I look at many at the same time. But the problem is that if there are no reliable nonverbal cues, it doesn't matter if you use one or if you use many. So today we can see a shift of paradigm that goes from the nonverbal approach and the emotional approach which is about trying to read a person's inner mental states by observing behavior, to the cognitive approach. What you should do is to go for speech content. You can look for inconsistencies. It can be an inconsistency between what you know and the person is telling you. Use the background information that you have as an interrogator in an optimal way. You can look whether the person is telling things that can be verified or not, because a person can talk a lot, but he or she might, doesn't say anything that can be verified. You should also ask unanticipated questions or ask the suspect to respond in a format that is not anticipated. For example, to draw a sketch instead of verbally answering a question. That's the way forward for lie detection.